Recall where we stopped in the previous video and we said that the slope coefficient is biased because we're missing this effect from x on y due to the omitted variable that happens in the error term. Now, with that said, what would be an instrumental variable? With the instrumental variable, we want to isolate the effect that happens on y due to the error term. So whatever effect is going to happen on y must happen only via x. So what we do is we're regressing, we're regressing one more variable on the independent variable. We're going to prove how these regressors work in the next videos. But for now, this graph matters. The instrumental variable, which is z, let's call it z, is going to affect the independent variable x, which in turn is going to affect the outcome. X is going to affect the outcome. Now, what, what's a criteria here? What is the requirement for an instrumental variable to be successful is that this effect must be significant. So the instrumental variable must definitely affect the independent variable and it necessarily must not affect the error term because if Z does not affect the omitted variable that is in the error term, then by definition, any effect that beta will have, the slope coefficient, whatever that is going to represent, is only going to happen from the instrumental variable. So we're literally isolating the variation in the results, in the outcome, due to the independent variable only. That's what we are doing. We're isolating, we're getting rid of this uh, error term that was biasing our result. Now, how does this work? And let's see why this is actually going to be a non-biased answer or basically a more accurate answer. Uh, so let's work with the concept of covariance. What will we have? We will have a covariance, meaning the result that we are measuring, the outcome is going to vary, is going to change with the instrumental variable. Whenever we are adding the instrumental variable to the model, the result is going to change due to it. So we're going to have a covariance between the instrumental variable that we use in a regression for one individual and the outcome for that individual. So how do we write this mathematically? Because with math, we will have peace of mind that this works. So we will have the covariance between the instrumental variable. What is the regression model? This is the regression model. So we replicate that. We will have alpha plus, we will have alpha plus beta times xi plus the error term. Now let's break down this covariance step by step because we have we have an association here. We have the covariance between the instrumental variable with the constant of the regression line. So that's first covariance between the instrumental variable and the constant of the regression line. Plus we go to the next set, the covariance between the instrumental variable and the independent variable, which is B times X. So we're going to write it as B times the covariance between, between Z and X. So between the instrumental variable and the independent variable. And finally, we have the last one over here. Let me change colors for that. We have the last one over here, which is going to be the covariance between Z and the error term. So we have the covariance between the instrumental variable and the error term. Now, what do we notice here? Let's see. We can, we can see that the covariance between the instrumental variable and a constant is going to be zero. Since the constant does not vary, it means there is no variance with regards to the independent variable. Whenever we have a covariance between one term and a constant term, that covariance is zero since the constant does not change. So that's going to be zero. Now over here, we're actually going to have a certain covariance. Why is that? Because we said that the instrumental variable Z actually has an effect on X. So there is going to be a covariance between them. When Z moves, X moves. That's the idea. So we keep that. We have beta times the covariance of Z, the instrumental variable and the independent variable. And finally, what do we have in the last term? The covariance between the instrumental variable and the error term. What did we say? The instrumental variable must not have an effect on the error term, so they cannot move together. So that covariance becomes zero as well. So we write it over here below. That's just zero. Recall, what are we doing? We're still calculating the covariance between the instrumental variable and Y covariance between the instrumental variable and y. So if the instrumental, the covariance between z and y is equal to beta times the covariance of z and x, we want to show the effect, the slope coefficient. What is the beta? What is the estimate of beta? Well, the estimate of beta, if we solve the math, is going to be the division between this covariance. So the covariance between z and y, covariance between the instrumental variable and the dependent variable divided by the covariance between the instrumental variable and the independent variable. And notice how this is going to make so much sense on the graph now, because when we zoom out and we look at the graph, what we just proved is this, that, uh, let me see if we can get there. Yes. What we just proved is that whatever change is happening in Y due to Z passes via X. This is what we proved. We are proving this 
mechanism. So covariance in covariance of z and y, this is how y is going to change via z when z is passing through x. So what we're showing is that the instrumental variable is going to affect the independent variable and the independent variable in return is going to affect the outcome variable, the dependent variable. And notice we have nothing to do here with the error term because we isolated that variation in results due to the error term since the covariance between the instrumental variable and the error term was zero. Hope this all makes sense. In the next video, we'll see how we can write this regression line in a two-step least squares model.